hear the code? Character for character in here, you'd swap books, check each other's work. Okay. Say, for example, you say, okay, we got an authorized thing locked. You open your keys, get your keys out. There's a code in here, and there's an uh, authenticator card. So you pull out Q5. There's a number, Q5. Rip that open, that's going to have the rest of the information that you need, the codes and stuff that you're going to need to launch the missile itself. Okay? So we're going to assume that all political solutions have gone out the window, and we're going to fire. We're going to, we're going to fire the missile. So it takes two two people to fire the missile. Two keys to turn. I've tried to reach both of them at the same time, and I can't do it. it takes two, that's that's too sure that two people can't do it. A rogue agent, can, a rogue a rogue crew member cannot do it. So go ahead and put your hand. Uh, missile missile crews use your left hand. Go ahead and use your left hand. There we go. It, you know, it's, they're spring loaded, they have to be turned within two seconds of each other. That assures that one person can't turn this one and run over and get the other one. So it still took two, still took two people simultaneously doing it at the same time. I'm going to give a countdown and then go ahead and turn it, hold it for five seconds, and you're going to see a bunch of indicator lights come up here. Okay? Go ahead, go ahead and turn. Five, four, three, two, one, and you can release. Okay. Now you've just killed five million people. You can't stop it now. We're going to start. <laughs> so what's going to happen is you're going to start. The missile's going to start powering up, and you guys to switch to apps power. I think you see that indicator light come on. So now the missile's assumed its own own power, no longer requiring any power from an outside source. The the the, the silo doors, 760 ton silo door, is going to start reeling back. And when you when you start to reel back, you saw the tipsy beams up, up upstairs. When you saw the movie, the tipsy beams. That's going to roll through the tipsy thing. You're going to hear the alarm go off. Okay, now the silo is soft. The silo is vulnerable now that it's not covered up anymore. So the silo is soft. The fuels are going to start, the butterfly valve is going to open. The fuels are going to start mixing together. The rocket's going to start to fire. We start, when the rocket starts to fire, we start dumping water. 150 gallons, 150 gallons a second on the flames, not to extinguish the flames but to allow the missile to get out of the silo itself. With that much power, it's two 747 engines in the confines of the silo, it would destroy itself before it got out of the silo. So you have the acoustical tiles and the, and the water after the sound abatement, the absorption of the, wa or the water into steam. And that's mostly what you see coming out of the ducts. It's not smoke, it's mostly steam that you see coming out. That's what, that's what used, we used as sound abatement, otherwise the missile would have never made it out of the silo. But once it's gone, it's gone. Okay, so what do you do now? You sit here and wait. You wait for further orders, which I make, which I alluded to earlier. I would assume that if you're going to sue further orders, it probably would have come through the slough. It's a survivable low-frequency antenna. Would that be a fair guess, Brad? Yeah. That's what I'd say. And if you don't get any further orders, mm -hmm. there's nobody left to hear from anywhere. So what do you do? You sit here in the if you sit here in the missile control center. You have 30 days of food and water. And after 30 days, you don't care anything. You can decide what you're going to do. You're either going to run out of air. Or you can go down to level three and take the talked about the escape hatch and go up and see what's left. You get to decide what you want to do at that point. Okay. Or you kill your buddy and you've got 60 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>